Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry I can't make this presentation on the spot because I didn't get my visa in time. My name is Hai Bo Cheng. I'm from Peking University in Beijing, China. I'm honored to have the opportunity to present our recent work, a security analysis of Hogwarts. We all have a lot of accounts. Almost every account needs a password for authentication. This picture is a word cloud for password. I think a lot of people can see their password on the picture. For example, 12345 and I love you are very popular passwords. Most websites request their user to register a username with a password for authentication. Although some alternatives are proposed, for example, SMS, USB key. Password is still the most popular authentication method. So the file storing the password become a rich targeted of attackers. We can see that during the past years, millions of passwords were leaked, thousands of data breaches were confirmed. Even some popular websites didn't survive. For example, the data breach of Yahoo occurred several times. All the 3 billion users were, in, were impacted. After the data was stolen by the attackers, they can recover the plain text or most passwords in a short time. This is because password authentication follows zip law. Most user passwords are in a small set of popular passwords. So the website should inform the user as soon as possible after a date breach occurs. Generally, websites didn't realize the date was leaked and didn't inform the users. The table shows some basic information of several data breaches. The last column is the time between the data breach occurred and the website informed its users. In 2008, the data on MySpace was stolen. MySpace didn't realize the leak until eight years later it was sold on Black market at the price of 6 Bitcoin. Other websites were similar. The time varied from months to years. This gives the attacker enough time to recover the plain text of passwords and explore them. There is an revised proposed Honorwell scheme to detect the death breach. When the attacker stores the data and exploit it, the website can be alarmed. The traditional method stores the ID and passwords of a user in the password file on one server. In general, the password is stored at hash value with a random sort. Honeywell's game generates some decoy passwords and stores them with the real password in the password file on one server. The position of the real password is stored in another server, Honey Checker. If the password file is stolen, the attacker cannot tell the real password from the decoy passwords. She must try to log in the website with those passwords. When someone logs in with decoy password, the website knows the password file was stolen. This is the situation that only the password file is stolen. If only the honey checker is stolen, the attacker cannot get any useful information. If and only if both of them is stolen, Honeywell's scheme achieves the, the same security as the traditional method. Honeywell's system has one parameter, key. The number of sweet words includes including one real password and key minus one hundred words. 
the larger the key is, the harder the real password is distinguished from honey words. In our work, we set key to 20. Honeywood system has two thresholds of Honeywood login times. There is a small probability that a normal user enters a wrong password by mistake, and this wrong password happens to be a Honeywood. To avoid the form alarm, Honeywood system sets two thresholds, T1 for one single user and T2 for the whole website. When the Honeywood login times reaches the threshold, the user or the website will be alarmed. The key to Honeywood's method is how to generate Honeywood's which cannot be distinguished from the real password. Trace and Reverse propose four specific methods. Trick two, modern syntax, hybrid, and simple model. We will show the Honeywords generated by the four methods are very easy to be distinguished. In our work, we are focusing on the security on Honeywords generation method. We propose an efficient distinguished attack and two security metrics. Based on attack, we evaluate the four dress reversed methods and the password probability model methods on real datasets. A distinguished attackers need to determine the order of attack for a given user and his key sweet words. And for n users on the website, and their n times key sweet words. A straightforward idea is shorting the honey words in the order of password cracking, i.e. the decreasing order of probability. We call this attack method top PW. We propose a more efficient method, norm top PW. This method cracks the sweet words in the decreasing, decreasing order of normal light or normalized probability. For a given user, the order is the same as top PW. For all users, norm top PW cracks the sweet words in an adaptive order as follows. Step 1. Compute the normalized probability of every sweet word. Sweet uh, step two, crack the crack the user with the maximum sweet word. Step three, if succeed, exclude the user and go back to step two. If fail, renormalize the remaining sweet words of the user and go back to step two. Corresponding the order for a given user and the order for all user, we propose two security metric, flatness graph and the success number graph. On flatness graph, the point x y means a given user can be successfully cracked with y probability when logged in x times. On success number graph. The point x, y means y users on the website can be successful, su successfully cracked when logged in x time with honor, with honor words. We evaluated the honor words generation methods on 10 datasets. These datasets are composed of 100 million passwords and involve nine different web services. Under the norm top PW attack, all the four dress reverse methods are vulnerable. At least 600,000 users are successfully cracked when Honeywell's login time reaches 10,000. 
This is two orders of magnitude higher than expected. Please note that the scale on the graph is log graph, log scale. Although the curve of norm tau pw is close with the curve of tau pw on the success number graph, norm tau pw is much more efficient. On the flatness graph, we can see that at least 35% users can be successfully cracked at the first trial. This is seven times the, ex the expected value. We get the same result on other data sets. The four methods fail to provide the expected security. On average, at least 11% users can be successfully cracked when the, uh, the Honeywell login time reaches 10%. 10,000, and at least 29% users can be successfully cracked at the first try. The four methods have the inherent defeat. The words generated by those methods follow uniform distribution. But the password distribution follows the zip law. If and only if the Honeywell distribution is the same as the, Honey, as the password distribution, the Honeywell cannot be distinguished. This naturally leads to an idea using the password probability model to generate Honeywell. Trace and Reverse mentioned the idea in their paper. Next, we evaluate the two state-of-art probability models, PCFD-based model and Markov-based model. The two methods are better on the flatness graph, but still vulnerable on the success number graph. This is because there are a large number of passwords of which the probability is underestimated. The left graph shows the, prob the probability of the top 1,000 passwords. The right graph shows the last 1,000. The black line is the real probability. We can see each model varies greatly from the real probability. Mark model and the PCFT model underestimate the probability of a large number of passwords, even some popular passwords. This model cannot estimate the probability of the passwords that don't occur in the training set. It sets zero probability for those passwords. PCFT model also sets zero probability for a lot of passwords. A possible solution is to use the hybrid model of password models. When generating a Honeywell by a hybrid model, first choose a model randomly. Second, generate a mo uh, generate a Honeywell from this model. We can see that the hybrid model of list mark and PCFG based model is the best on both metrics and is very close to the expected value. In conclusion, the four methods proposed by Joyce and Revest have inherent defeat. In password probability model methods, single model is vulnerable. Hybrid model is the best on success number graph and flatness graph. That's all. 
Thank you for your attention. Okay, there won't be any questions. Uh,